Now it's a university time. We have a real professor coming on stage, the second of the day, Carl Leo. He's a little bit form, fa more famous now than he used to be because he won an important prize recently. But um, he's now really talking about um, how to take IP know-how from the university into a small startup. And you co-founded Heliatech and Novalet because you are a real master in the field of organic electronics. And here's your clicker. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thanks for inviting me to present here. Um, good evening, everybody. Uh, I hope this is now not too scientific. We are approaching the time where you would have liked to have dinner. And uh, I shouldn't uh, spend too much time on technical stuff. Uh, but uh, I just want to share you a little bit uh, the excitement about the organic materials. Organic means basically carbon, carbon-based materials. And uh, those are semiconducting. And you can do a lot, of, a lot of nice things. You can do a large area, flexible devices. You have many, many materials. There are millions of organic semiconductors around, and this can be very cheap. Now, what can, can you do with these semiconductors? You can make organic LEDs. Uh, you can make organic solar cells. Uh, Thibault has talked about this this morning already. And you can do flexible electronics, transistors, or memory. Now, uh, I'm working now since about 20 years in that field. And for a long time, it was academic games and playing. But uh, it, it has, I think, very practical importance. I think it's a green technology, organic electronics. If you look at examples like uh, flexible, ultra-low-cost solar cells, if you look at highly efficient OLED lighting, or if you look at efficient OLED micro displays, it's obvious that it's, it's a very green technology. And uh, it's actually an important technology. This is uh, already um, uh, predicting the, the market in 2027, some time to go. But uh, the basic point is the size. It predicts a market of 330 billion, which is larger than today's microelectronics market. So it could be a very large market. As I said, we did a lot of uh, uh, academic games and spent a lot of basic science. But uh, there's now one very big commercial success, and that is uh, the, the OLED smartphone. And uh, the, the success of Novalet, actually, the current success is, is linked to that. It is now a, a market of a few billion dollars, and uh, it has shown what this technology can do. Now, I'm a scientist, so I'm looking ahead what, what comes in the future. And uh, in my personal opinion, OLED lighting is the next step. We've heard a very nice talk from Aaron Fine about uh, flat lighting using LEDs, making point sources into area sources. We do the area sources directly. And uh, um, I think both, both technologies uh, will have their niches. By the way, I met him once on a plane, so the world is small, and uh, uh, you can really sometimes meet interesting people. Uh, you heard about organic solar cells this morning. I don't want to spend much time on it. And uh, I think the biggest long-term market might be organic electronics. This is an, actually an example from Dresden. It's a flexible e-ink display from Plastic Logic. Now, as I said, this is a commercial success, but uh, the other ones are still in the early development stages. And I want to discuss you a little bit how we did this in Dresden, how we made a number of startups, and, and how basic science uh, went into products. Today, uh, we have uh, a large cluster on organics in Dresden along the full value chain. Uh, it's about 30 or 40 partners with about 1,000 employees. It's probably the largest cluster in in the world, and for sure the largest one in Europe. Now, as said uh, by the, in the introduction, uh, I'm co-founder of some of the companies, Novalet, Heliatech, Symphotech, Reafis, and too many. Uh, are started in basically uh, with my collaboration. And, uh, but there are also companies which were existing, like von Ardenne is a, a tool builder, or companies coming from Asia, Sunic Systems, companies coming from England, Plastic Logic and uh, uh, some, some smaller ones. Now, this all started uh, uh, in, in basic research, and a recent basic research result, for instance, which we did at the university, uh, has been published three years ago. What we basically showed is that we can beat the fluorescent tube. So the organic LED can be more efficient than the fluorescent tube. And uh, this was really a laboratory result, short lifetime. It showed that it works. How do you transfer that into a company? Well, uh, there are many ways to go. And uh, the, the problem is usually that between the basic research 
and the company, there's a very large gap. Now, before I go into that and discuss that, I should show you that since green technology is where you have to go, that already years ago, we did the ultra green uh, lighting device. We did actually an organic LED driven by a potato battery. So this is now fully disposable. It was a demonstration to show how little energy organic LEDs need. But uh, back to, to the serious work, I said there's a gap between basic research and the application, and there are several ways to close this gap. And one gap is actually the Fraunhofer Society. Um, I'm coming from the Fraunhofer IPMS in Dresden, and it's one of the 60 or so institutes of the Fraunhofer Society. And it, it, sh it shows what you can do when you go from basic research to, to industry. For instance, uh, uh, at Fraunhofer, we can operate tools like this. This is a 25 million uh, euro investment for a coding tool. This is totally impossible at a university. But at Fraunhofer, you can operate such tools, and we can uh, manufacture pilot on such tools. So we can span the whole uh, value chain from very basic technology to pilot production. And uh, in, in many of the cases I'm discussing, this has helped a lot uh, to do it this way. I show you one example. We want to do this OLED lighting flexible. We want to do it from the roll. And this is a, a research tool which we all set up, we have set up at Fraunhofer together with, uh, with this company. Uh, and it shows you that, that you can produce here, this is a 30 centimeter wide plastic or metal fall, and that you can produce this OLED continuously on the fall. And uh, it's, it's operating successfully. This is an organic LED still in the tool on the coating cylinder. And uh, so in a few years, you will buy the meter by the light in, in the Baumarkt. You'll go to Hornbach and get two meters of lighting for your roof. Now, um, then we started to do spin-offs. And I want to briefly discuss some cases. Novalet is, is the largest one. Uh, we founded it in 2001, right before the bubble burst and therefore needed two years to get it operating and financed. But now it's 130 co-workers, and as you might have read in the newspaper, it's heading for Nasdaq. And uh, uh, it's, it's the world leader in OLED efficiency and stability is in the, in the product, but it contains many new ideas uh, also for other topics like, like organic electronics. And the key in Novalet was actually people. The, the most elegant way to go from university into companies is to have the right people. And in, in case of Novalet, it was mainly Jan Blochwitz, who was a gifted PhD student, but also a talent. And he founded it uh, together with us, and, and he got it running. So uh, that is always a key point. And besides people, you need money. And uh, actually, the first person who funded uh, Novalet was uh, Michael Meyer from Technostart. And uh, he was actually a person who had a good, he was smelling good technology, and he, he was the first funding, and some others like uh, Paul Josef Pata here today. Now, this is what you can do with OLED lighting. As we've heard before, there are other technologies, but uh, uh, the OLED technology, uh, uh, I think, has some advantages. Like, for instance, this is built on transparent modules, so if it's switched off, it looks like transparent glass, and if it's turned on, uh, it looks like this, this nice lamp, and there are many other things you can do with OLED lighting, but I don't want to discuss that in much detail. Uh, organic photovoltaics uh, has been discussed this morning by Thibaut Le Seguillon from, from Heliatech. I think I don't need to, to say much about it, but uh, it, it has, again, a very large potential, and it has some unique points, like uh, you can nicely make it transparent, uh, color-tunable, transparent, and other things, and uh, this, as you've probably seen this morning, and there's actually a just a third round ongoing, so when you want to have an investment opportunity, just talk to Thibault. And uh, I think the most important in our, uh, point in organic photovoltaics is simply look at the progress. You know, this, the green data points are really the data points which count. And uh, as you can see, in the last few years, there was an explosion in efficiency. Um, Mitsubishi is a little better than Heliatek, but, but when it comes to product, Heliatek is better than, by a factor of two than, than everybody else in the field. And this can be ex extrapolated, and my personal prediction is that uh, in about 10 years we'll be at 20%. And uh, uh, this will give a bright future for organic photovoltaics. Now, as mentioned, uh, Organic photovoltaics is actually now government approved by the Zukunftspreis, but unfortunately, as you all also know, 
I should have cut this, this image somewhere here. <laughs> yeah, that, uh, that happens in, in politics. <laughs> the lifetime of a Bundespräsident is now significantly shorter than university professor, but whatever. Now, uh, let me come to another application. And actually, I think it's, it's uh, personally, I, I believe it's the most exciting project I ever did. But in terms of financing, it also turned out to be the most difficult one. Currently, we are doing, in my opinion, in, in the television field, we are doing nonsense. We work really hard to make televisions more efficient, and the engineers work on LED backlighting and on OLED TV and all that stuff, and they really do wonders. Televisions have become much more efficient, but the power spend for watching television is, is exploding. Why? Because the screens get bigger and bigger. You know, we had previously a small TV with bad efficiency, now we have a huge TV with very high efficiency, but it spends more because the area grows quadratically. That's nonsense. That's not green. And uh, there is a green solution, and it's very simple. It's a micro display. Why micro display? The idea is very simple. If you project a very small display into the eye in the right way, it looks like you are watching a big TV screen. You can't even tell the difference. I've actually seen that many times. The actually. Technology is, is, is uh, looking like a very large TV, but you simply have to wear some very energy efficient goggles. So the, the, the advantage is you can, for instance, take your mobile phone and with very low power consumption, you can watch a movie and uh, uh, you have an, an image quality which is absolutely comparable to a large screen, but the energy consumption to give you a number of, of such glasses can be 50 milliwatts. So you, even with a standard mobile phone, you can watch 10 hours video with such, a, such glasses. How is this technology working? Well, there are micro displays around based on, on liquid crystal, but uh, we do it much better. We put actually the, the organic LED directly on the silicon wafer. The silicon wafer here produces the light directly. Every pixel is directly connected to the light source. You generate RGB by using a color filter. And based on that, you can buy, uh, you can build a very small display, a few millimeters by a few millimeters. But if you look at it, it looks as sad as a large screen. Now, uh, we have actually uh, uh, some, some extensions of that technology, uh, which uh, 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 you can use. Uh, there's one point that, uh, first of all, you can use these displays in many professional applications, in, in medical applications. Also, you can do maintenance work. But you can do another point, and that is you can also introduce additional information. And we have a technology where the micro display is also a camera. So for instance, imagine a mechanic who is repairing a car. And uh, the, uh, the di display can sense where he looks at. And for instance, if the mechanic looks at a certain point, the display can immediately show the manual and explain him at what, which part he's looking at. So in, in the future, you can repair something, and, the, and the, you, you look at it, and the, glass will, uh, the glasses will tell you, I'm looking at the right place. Or you can even operate a, a screen. You can operate um, an, 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 a computer by simply looking with your, with your eye at it. And there are many, many applications for that, mobile navigations, uh, night vision, uh, virtual reality applications, where you can beautifully use uh, these micro displays, engineering visualization, and many more, besides these consumer applications I have explained uh, to you. Now, um, after founding six or seven companies, um, I'm in a position where I have some experience with that. And uh, I wanted to briefly make some, some personal remarks where I see the, the strong points of Europe, and especially Germany, and, and the weaker points. And uh, what I would say is, is that in Europe, uh, our, our basic research is, is still excellent. Uh, it, it got much better in Asia and China in the last few years. But uh, I'm, I'm still convinced that, that uh, Europe uh, is, is excelling in basic research. And we have the chance to keep that for some time. There are other strong points. A very strong, specific uh, German point is, is, in my opinion, the Fraunhofer Society, which is a, is a very good bridge to industry. And also one point which works very nicely in, in Germany is that there has been much support in seed financing, the Heidrich Gründerfonds, and we'll later on see Alex von Frankenberg is, I think, a very good idea. And there are many others from, from the lender in Germany which have uh, helped in financing. 
So there are strong points which make it easier to make startups in, in uh, Germany, but there are also cons. And what I have learned, for instance, is that uh, if you really want to have a lot of money, then uh, Germany is not a good place or Europe is, is not a good place. So that is better in the US. And uh, uh, I think uh, we have to improve on that. As discussed in the, in the previous uh, roundtable meeting, uh, when Bart Marcus said, where's the venture and venture capital? <laughs> we, we don't have this risk-taking culture which we have in the United States. Uh, first of all, uh, the typical PhD student of mine still prefers a job at Siemens or Infineon or somewhere to, to a startup, which, which is sad. And the other point is, uh, once you failed in Germany, fortunately none of my companies failed so far, but if you failed once in Europe, it, it's much worse than in the US. In the US, everybody says you are experienced now, next time you do it better, but uh, this is unfortunately different here. And finally, I think a very bad point is the way uh, risk capital and R&D are taxed in, in total. This, this has to be changed. So the glass is half full, the glass is half empty, but uh, um, at least uh, many, many uh, of the pro uh, products we've done so far have worked out. Now, um, before I end, uh, let me just mention and advertise, like the previous speakers, a little bit the current investment stories we have and we can discuss in, during the, the dinner or so. Uh, as mentioned, there's a, a financing round ongoing at Heliatech and you can talk to Debo. I think it's, uh, I personally believe in the long term, the organic solar cell will be the, the killer solar cell. So it's worth to invest there. Then, as I said, micro displays is, in my opinion, a very exciting uh, product. We have actually uh, revenue, so Bart Marcus won't invest, but maybe it's somebody else who invests in a company despite revenues. And uh, also I have a, a somewhat still secretive uh, lighting killer product where we also need seed financing and I'd be happy to discuss it. So thanks for giving me the opportunity to talk a little bit about what we did, what we plan to do, and uh, if you want to contact me, this is my address. Thank you.